Adam from Reloom posted this really cool animation, I think done in Figma here, where you click a shuffle button and it cycles between three different layouts. We can see we have card head side by side, we have cards on the left and right, and then cards on the bottom here. Now I went ahead and was able to get this going in an hour with the flip plugin for GSAP, which is perfect for these kinds of layout animations. And I'm going to, in this video today, just show you kind of a quick overview of how I structured the HTML and CSS in Webflow, and then I'll run through the code of how I wrote this in JavaScript with the flip plugin. So let's get started. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, the key for these layouts is that we have three of them here, all within a div called main. And this div main has a minimum height of 50 viewport heights. This is going to be key in that we kind of want to set some fixed heights on things just because we have content moving from one box to another. And if those boxes are already taking up the amount of space that they need to, then it's a lot easier to send like append things to the DOM element that's already taking up the height that it should be. So you'll see in this that I have some use of grid, but mostly I'm using flexbox with the sizing parameter set to expand or contract. So in the first layout, this is the one that's showing, this is the kind of the left and right columns and then the one in the center. So we have one left, one center and one right and one left and one right. Um, these are just a vertical flex box and width set to 21%. And then in the center, this is set to, has the flex child sizing to grow if possible. And that's getting both the heading and the subheading elements in here. Now what's gonna happen with our flip animation is that we're essentially just gonna take the image and we're going to append it to the two images contain element right here. And then imagine we're doing it for all of them. So we'll have five copies here. And then these would of course be going away because we're appending them from here to here. And then the heading and the subheading will come over as well. And they each get their own containers in state two because they're side by side. The other thing we need to take care of here is the text alignment needs to be switched over to left. So we'll do that with a combo class. And I have that in the page settings, which I'll show you when we get to the code. And then the last state is state three. So the image will come from two to three, I think right. And we're just gonna grab the first image. All the other images are gonna go away just like that. And then on the left side, we'll get the heading and the subheading. And so the three left is a flex vertical and set to grow if possible. And then three right is also grow if possible, but with a max width of 40% of its parent. And now a reminder again, that each of these parents are set to absolute. So we have one, two, and three corresponding to state one, two, and three. And these all have positions set to absolute and cover such that they all exist on top of each other. And that's why you're getting all this kind of empty state styling from Webflow in here. So two is also absolute set to cover and one is also absolute set to cover. And then main has position set to relative. So they're all existing within main kind of and stacked on top of each other. Now I'm gonna go ahead and undo everything just so that we're back into state one. And then down here, I also have a button with a class of shuffle button. Now let's go ahead and look in the page settings. So I have both the GSAP core library as well as the flip plugin installed here. And then I'm also loading a code sandbox file right here. I have a utility class of text align left and I'm setting the text align property to left. So this will be used as a combo class. So now we can go ahead and publish. So the code starts by registering the flip plugin for GSAP. And then right here, we are waiting for the Webflow object to load on the window, which is kind of like the DOM content listener event. Uh, not exactly the same, but pretty similar. So this just knows that once Webflow is done loading, then we'll go ahead and run our code. And our code is gonna be right in here within these curly brackets. Now we have a bunch of selectors. So I'm just selecting all the elements on page that I showed you in the Webflow project. So we're getting all of our images using the query selector all method. And then we're getting each individual element, the heading, the subheading, and the shuffle button. And we're getting their respective containers depending on the state. So for state one, we have the one left class. We have the one center and the one right. For state two, we have the images container. We have the heading container and the subheading container. And then for state three, we have the left and the right divs. We're also going to define a global variable called current state and set that equal to zero. And this is going to track which layout state we are in. Within our code that runs when Webflow is ready, we are going to add an event listener to the shuffle button. And the add event listener gets two parameters. It gets the name of the event. In this case, we wanna listen for the click event. And it also gets a function. So we're defining an anonymous function here and we'll define the code we want to run when the button is clicked within these two curly brackets. So the very first thing we're gonna do with GSAP is that we're going to use the flip.getState method. And getState takes an array of elements and all the elements that we wanna flip or move are all of the images. So we're going to spread this array of images into this new array denoted by these brackets here. And then we're also going to pass the heading and the subheading. So now flip is tracking the state 
of all of these elements. So there's six plus seven plus eight total elements right here. And we're gonna store that in a variable called state. Next, we'll open up a conditional block that runs some code based on the current state. So when current state is zero, this is our first state, we wanna go to state two. When current state equals one, this is our second state, we wanna go to state three. And then we're in state three, which is in this else block here, then we'll wanna go back to state zero. We'll increment our current state to the next state so that when the button is clicked again, we then jump into the other conditional. Now, the thing we wanna do is we want to take all the images within that first layout and put them in that bottom bar on the second layout. So we're gonna call the for each function on all the images, and then we get access to each individual image. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take that state to container and append each image to it by calling the append method there. Now, we also know that we need to align the text to the left, so we're going to use that combo class here, classless.add text align left, so that our text now does not align center, but aligns to the left. And then we're also gonna do that with the sub, and then we're going to append those two elements as well to their respective containers. So we have our state two heading container and our state two sub heading container. That's all the logic that needs to happen for state one to state two. Now we haven't animated it yet, but let's go ahead and save and check our logic. So on our site here now, we load with that first layout. And if we click shuffle, then everything jumps right away to state two, which has all the images down here. And if we inspect in the DOM and we select something here, if we come to two layout, we can see that in the bottom, we are getting all of our six images. And in the top heading contain here, we're getting both the heading and the subheading. And if we come to the first layout, we'll see that one left has nothing in it and one right has nothing in it. So we've essentially manipulated the DOM to put the elements where we want them, but here is where we're gonna use GSAP's flip to animate these things. After this conditional logic is where I'll run my flip animation and I'll call flip.from. So we'll come from our state, which is stored up here. And we'll just specify a couple of options within the options object here within the two curly brackets. So on the site now, if I press shuffle, we get everything animating, Flip took care of all of that for us, which was really cool. Now in Adam's original video, he had used a bounce and the only bounce that ships with GSAP is this bounce.out. And unfortunately it's a little bit aggressive for what we're going for here. So I'm gonna stick with power4.out. You could use a custom ease to get that bounce that we need. But for now, we're just going to animate between the layouts and we'll stick with this ease that we have by default. We can remove this flip dot from for now and finish our logic within the, within the conditional block here. So when we're at current state equal to one, which is of course layout two, then what we wanna do is take stuff from layout two and put it in layout three. So we're going to increment our current state. Then we are going to take the first image and set its height to 100% now because it's going to that space over on the right and we want it to make sure that it's set to 100%. I actually set an aspect ratio on these images of 16 by nine, because we definitely don't want any of the content to clip on these except in this one layout. This layout is has that design where the right one kind of bleeds off the side of the screen to the right. And while I'm using a container here and not doing a full bleed sort of layout, this is going to ensure that the image at least takes up that 50 viewport heights that we defined on the main container. The other thing I did on our image class was that I set it to cover and also the position to the left here just so that when it does take up 100% of the viewport height. So let's see what that looks like. I'll just drop it into three right here. That it, it kind of, you know, maintains its aspect ratio, but if we set the height to 100%, now that's getting kind of more what we want. And just imagine like these images over here didn't exist. So I think that kind of explains what I'm going after here. And I'll just reset everything again. Back in the code, let's finish out this logic for the transition from state two to state three. So now we wanna loop over all of our images and I'm using a for loop here. Now this for loop, it starts from an I value of one and goes to images.length. And I'm just going to set the rest of the images opacity to zero. I don't really care about them. So boom, their opacity is zero. I don't want them to go anywhere. I just want them to not influence anything on the screen. Now I'm gonna start appending elements where I want them. So three right, that div is going to append the first image and three left is going to get the heading as well as the subheading. So now if we save and check our progress and refresh, then I shuffle, we get to state two and we get to state three. Now, remember that I got rid of our flip dot from statement. We'll add that here at the very end. So in our last conditional block, this is transitioning from state three back to state one. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So I'm gonna set current state back to zero. We're going to create a for loop here that now goes from zero to images.link. And I wanna make sure all the images are full opacity. So I'm just setting the opacity style to everything to one. And then I'm also going to set the height back to auto. Remember we set the height to 100% here. So now we're just gonna set it back to auto. Now the important thing for transitioning to layout three is that we are getting half of our images and putting them on the left and the other half of our images and putting them on the right. So I'm just going to do this split with another conditional inside our for loop. 
And if i is less than three, then these are the images that go on the left. And if i is greater than that, these are the images that will go on the right. So one left will append images of i, and one right will append images of i. Now we need to take care of our headings as well. So we want to remove text align left here because the first layout is the only one where the text alignment is centered. And we're gonna do that with the subheading as well. And then we're going to append the heading and the subheading to that div one center as well. So that takes care of going from layout three back to layout one. Let's go ahead and bring our flip statement back in to make sure that these are all animated. So flip.from takes two arguments. First, our state. Again, that state was stored all the way up here. Every time we are clicking, we are storing the state of these images and the heading and subheading, which is defined by whatever state it's currently in. Then we make our DOM manipulations as we see fit. We can add and remove classes. We can append things to different places on the DOM. We can set styles um, explicitly right here, like we're setting opacity. And then finally, we call flip.from. We give it our state and our options, which are the duration, the ease, and absolute set to true in this case. So we go ahead and save and back on our site, we can hit shuffle. We go from one to two, now from two to three, and then three back to one as well. I think it's a great example of just how powerful the flip plugin is. Now, if you like this one, I actually have other videos on how to use the flip plugin as well. So I will link those right here. Be sure to check them out. Most people who watch this video are not subscribed. Here are the top five reasons to stay unsubscribed. Number five, afraid of saving time. Number four, allergic to easy learning. Number three, terrified of making more money on website. Number two, scared of making web design too much fun. And number one, fear of becoming a Webflow superhero. Hey you, yeah, subscribe now and unlock the full potential of Webflow with code.